Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Each day here at Church Militant, as part of our ongoing novena to the Holy Spirit for justice, as well as our rosary, also for justice in the nation, we pray for increased strength to fight two specific evils rampaging through the church and the culture, modernism and Marxism. And understand, these are, two, are little else than two different sides of the same coin, intimately connected. One does its damage in the theological realm, the other in the secular realm, but they are both moving towards the same goal. And that goal is the despiritualization of man, the reducing of human dignity to merely being a servant of the state. This is why the church must be merged with the state, to, pre to present the facade of some spiritual aspect or dynamic to the assault on human dignity, which is, of course, ultimately from God, since we are made in his image and likeness. Modernism and Marxism are like M&M candies, peanut or plain, slightly different looking on the outside, although still very, very close in appearance, but on the inside, they are identical. You can't tell the difference once you've popped them into your mouth, and that's because there is no difference. Just under that thin candy veneer, everyone is identical to every other one in the pack, just like modernism and Marxism, M&M. &M. This is why the Marxist cardinals in the church, not to mention their bishops and priests, are so enthralled with modernism. Likewise, it's why the modernist cardinals in the church, not to mention their bishops and priests, are so enthralled with Marxism. It's why when you go to Mass and there is a modernist priest blathering on, he hits all the Marxist talking points about immigration and climate change and all the rest of the lies from the left. Listen closely sometimes to the prayers of the faithful, which half the time aren't really prayers and seldom reflect the ideas of the authentic faithful. Little in some of those prayers reflects anything related to authentic Catholicism, but they read like a Saul Alinsky introductory class on class warfare or racism. Likewise, the Marxist media can't stop themselves from having on modernist clergy for interviews like, of course, James Martin. These aren't just separate ideologies with some areas of overlap. They are the same ideology with very slightly different ways of presenting themselves. Take off the robes and put on a suit and tie and James Martin could run for office on the Democratic Party ticket. Likewise, slap a miter on Biden's head and he could easily be Bishop Joe. They all talk the same, say the same things, talk about the same topics, identical on the inside, very slightly different looking on the outside, just to make you think you're getting something different. You aren't. This is why the rush on the part of bishops to go along with anything a government mandates, and in some cases, like the weirdo bishop in Ontario, Canada's London diocese, Ronald Fabro, who is going way beyond even that totalitarian government's COVID rules. He's ordering parish, meaning parishes, meaning his priest, to set up what amounts to snitch squads, where ushers must refuse you entry into the church for mass if you don't have on a mask. Ushers, get this, will be informed of your name and will be on the lookout for you. Likewise, Fabro has ordered that a pencil and piece of paper, this is unbelievable, be supplied at confessionals so after you have confessed, you can leave your name and number for contact tracing purposes. And no, we are not kidding. That's outrageous, but when it comes to weirdness around confession, Fabro and his staff are refusing to reveal to Catholics in the diocese that a certain priest was excommunicated for breaking the seal of confession. Then a few months later, blatantly in violation of canon law, Fabro asked Rome to lift the excommunication without, and here's the key point, without having fulfilled three requirements necessary before any lifting of the sentence could be done. While Fabro stomps around the diocese imposing dictatorial mandates on the flock, he conveniently, for more than a year, has kept to himself that one of his priests, at least one, is not trustworthy in the confessional. But hey, just make sure you put down your name and address after confession, 
It makes it so much easier to break the seal that way. And get this, your info then goes into a sealed envelope and given to the parish staff who will never open it unless they have to. Sure, sounds like Dominion voting machines, so much for anonymity around the sacrament of confession. Any bishop who would hide behind procedure to mask the identity of a priest who breaks the seal of confession is a disgrace. Likewise, he keeps no tabs on this priest who supposedly, unknown to Fabro, supposedly, just up and presented himself to another diocese where, inexplicably, the bishop there just accepted him and let him go serve at a religious community and offer public mass on Sundays and, yes, hear confessions. It wasn't until his presence was reported and fear of the news getting out about the whole affair did Fabro spring into action and order the priest back to the London Diocese. But man, he's all over that COVID crisis. No mask, no Eucharist. No contact tracing, no confession of sins. No bare hands, no reception of Holy Communion. COVID crisis, got it covered. Catholic crisis, meh, no big deal. Men like this go along because they gave, long ago gave up the ghost on the church. Fabro even joked once at a fundraiser for the seminary that all the numbers across the board for the church were dismal. They were in the toilet. Fewer weddings, fewer baptisms, confirmations, you name it. But, he added, the one number where they saw improvement was in the cemetery plot sales. Adding, to uncomfortable laughter from hundreds in attendance, that even if we lose you coming in, we still get you going out. Modernism dumps the authentic faith. Marxism replaces it. The things of God matter not at all to either Marxist or modernists. Their single concern is being in the elite crowd when the rest of humanity is subjected to their one world new order. Neither cares what your favorite color M&M is because they're all the same. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.